start off, I'm just going to make a loop around the unit, your basics and everything here. First off, you're going to need your hex key to get into all your compartments here on the left and right side of the unit. You see on the front, that's where your handle is. It goes up and down, lock it into place, it'll stay up. This is how you access your generator and muffler. And this is also where your fuel shutoff is located. It's right here above the panel. Vertical is on, horizontal is off. If it's brand new, it should come with it off. So just make sure before you start it, turn it vertical, so she's on. To the left side, your first compartment is where your control panel is. Turn that, open it up, use your control panel. This is a manual start. You just do have the on off right here, for starting and stopping. To the left of that would be your panel to get to your starter if you had it. This is also where your oil fill is. You see it? It's right there. That little uh, black cap located in there. This is also where your oil sensor is located and your block numbers. To see your block numbers easiest, go to this little opening. Just look right in there between the tire and you'll see a number stamped right there. The star 55 number is generally the number we'll need for uh, ordering any parts. And there is also a number stamped below that. A star 55 followed by another star. It could be a star 45 depending on what year it was made. Um, but we will need that number. Now if you go to the back here, you'll see this is your your rear compartment. Flip it open. It'll lock into place and it'll be your recoil assembly. It's also where your choke is. Left is on, right is off to start it choke it on, full start it, it should fire up, let it run for a minute, then just turn your choke off to the run position. You should be good to go as far as running. Now to your left here is going to be where your overhead valve and carburetor is. Your overhead valve cover of course has OHV, carburetor is right in front of it. To access your uh, carb drain, it bolts right there. If you ever get any water in your carburetor, you can crack that open, let it drain, tighten it back up. Below here is where your oil drain is going to be. You see it right there. The oil drain bolt is located above that hole. Crack that nut open, take it off, put your oil drain pan below it. It should drain right through that opening. Then when you're done, just tighten the nut back down and you would fill it from the other side where I showed you earlier. There's no oil filter or anything on this unit, so there's nothing to worry about that. You just be able to drain, fill, and go. You also have your upper compartments here. This one will have your uh, extender cable in it. The 240 plug. It's just a little pigtail. It connects to the same area, your, um, your other 240, so it's not like an auxiliary um, power source it it will run off the same power that the rest of your panel is running on and then on the other side you have the other one this is where your battery would go this unit doesn't use a battery so it's just an open compartment right there you can store anything you need in it and then of course on the top is where your fuel cap is and your fuel gauge now as you see these compartments they don't open very well because of the wheel on either side so if you did have to access the unit at all it could be a pain so I'll show you real quick how to take your tires off very simple you just got to get it off the ground a little bit got both tires off the ground to remove them left or right side all you gotta do is go to the back side flip this little pin up right here pull it out pull your two washers off and the whole tire should just come right out of the uh, the um, axle bracket there um, you do have a spacer right here on your axle make sure you always put that back in if you're going to reassemble it and once that's all out to get to your compartments is going to be a lot easier you just open it up and everything's a lot easier to get to now now also, the one thing that's different between, of course, the manual start and electric start is the starter. Right here, you see your starter plate is. The manual starts are 
able to go to an electric start you just have to buy a starter and possibly electric start flywheel you just unbolt these bolts the starter would bolt in if for some reason your unit's not starting brand new over here also you'll see is where a lot of wires come and meet right here see there's there's a T so if you either have it does not want to start because no spark check here if it is running and won't shut off also check here make sure these wires aren't broke or anything like that now another thing your starter got one right here you'll see on the starter you have a little tab right in the center of both of these terminals that tab is where your relay wire goes if the relay is unplugged or loose of course your starter is not going to indicate that you even turn the switch or anything and of course it's not going to start or anything like that so there's two things right there in the wiring to check brand new won't start or won't shut off um, other than that everything as far as starting method is pretty straightforward also right here you see you got a little ID tag some info um, you got an emissions control down there it'll have the brand of the unit usually on that sticker a lot of these units do have stickers somewhere on the blower housing with this information on it and if you're ever curious of course just give us a call up front and we'll be glad to help you out any way we possibly can and um, as far as changing your oil they take 10w30 um, they recommend a synthetic blend but like I said any questions give us a call up front other than that hopefully this helped you out